Oh wow, that's right. I forgot how to. I forgot that I can use this camera. Hello, folks. I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom, and let me attach this so I sound a little bit better. And I was debating about doing this now or doing this tomorrow. The lazy and part of me got said, just get that over with. And I'm wearing a wrestling t-shirt, so that means my clothesline wrestling t-shirt. AEW time. So let's talk about some AEW. But first off, wow, I haven't done this in a while. My God. You, sir, thank you. You, sir, have definitely earned that six count. Forget it, I forget what it was in reference to. I think I only put three posts up. <laughs> One about Sasha Banks, which I won't say. Um, another about Melissa Cage. And what was the other one I put up? Price. I forget what it was now. I don't think it was Sammy Guevara. Maybe the other post I put up was like, dude, there's 14 minutes left in this show. So let's get down to AEW. The, it was a weird show. AEW is beginning to fall into that trap when there's nothing big planned. It meh. I don't know if it's just wrestling. I don't know if it's if I'm tired. I don't know if it's coronavirus. I don't know if it's not having a day off from work for a whole month. Um, I don't know what it is. AEW, I'll tell you, well, let me start things off by saying AEW went by quick. Um, there was a whole thing, because Kevin Scampoli, sir, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, Kevin Scampoli on the whole effing show, he did an interview with Sammy Guevara. Uh, consequently, Sammy Guevara said some things he shouldn't have. He wanted to, to paraphrase 
what Sammy Guevara said. He wants to forcibly make Sasha Banks a mommy. So I'll let you guys read into that. And that was said 2016 on the whole effing show. The whole effing show. And the sky's turning the right for you and I. And I can't sing on like JT over there. So always give JT a shout out anyway. And of course, Kevin Sampley broke that. He interviewed Sammy Guevara again. Sammy Guevara said he wanted to forcibly make Sasha Banks a mommy. Um, I'm pretty sure I probably said worse. But again, I'm not necessarily famous. So I was kind of waiting to see because AEW tends to be more politically correct. They're more socially accepting of things. Me, I'm old school caveman. But AEW, it's a little bit more, not to use the wrestling company, but to use the term, they're progressive. So I think I missed like just the opening miss. I <laughs> I think jokingly over on Discord, they said Brandy fired, suspended Sammy Guevara. Because she is a chief branding officer. And oh, there was something, there was some other news story that broke. And I honestly don't know who this is. Um, maybe you, the YouTube audience, can tell me who is Trenshaw Khan or Trenshaw Biggers. Back in like TNA in the day, you know, every so often, ever since, not Bernie Madoff, Spacey, Kevin Spacey. Like, everyone's been coming out with all these, like, true horror stories about what they went through. And and this man said this about me. Oh, who was it? It was uh, Austin Theory is another one. Um, some 13-year-old girl, which, again, is always that touchy-touchy fan situation. Uh, Austin Theory pulled... Some 13-year-old girl a little too close to him. We'll see. Let's see here. Let's see if I can show you my little touchy-touchy situation. Which, of course, by the way, it's probably way too close. Because I was being the total smart at the time. So let's see if I can find... where. No, I don't want that. No, that's an ugly picture. Where is it? Where is touchy-touchy situation? Rina Gonzalez was pretty cool, though. But yeah, this was like the first time I ever took a selfie. He was really cool about it too. So it was Bo. She was okay. She was cute too. The very first one. Uh oh, here it is, folks. I'd probably think it way too close. Like, look at that pretty face. Actually, that was a good one too. Let's see, I'll show you. Does she actually put her hands on me? Because I just like so confused. I tell you what, I am terrible. At taking selfies. In fact, I have to send a picture of me to work. And I have no idea. I have to find one on the computer because I can't send any of these because I would be fired. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I sent that picture, I'd be. Who's that? Oh, that's the fake Billy K. Papa Tunde. <laughs> oh, there we go. That is a pretty good picture. Amazing person. Awesome Kong. With a very confused looking hobo Tom. That's it. That was the last show I went to. Then coronavirus hit. That's no bueno. It's okay. So let's see. I think that's yeah, that's all I'm gonna show. I don't feel like sending them that picture. That's just a terrible picture. I have to find that too. Oh crap. Well enough about that though. So Austin Theory did something I don't even know how long ago, because I don't know. I don't even know where that was. If it was in MLW, I don't think it was WWE. Because I don't remember. It might have been when he was in NXT. That's stretching it, though. But, yeah, like, everyone, and to half these people, I'm like, who are you? Like, whatever. I've already given my opinions, so I won't go there anymore. Again, Kevin Scampoli, we're not worthy. You, sir, 
are a journalist who is obviously a lot better than Meltzer is. Uh, so let's start off this show of AEW. Um, I was half expecting Brandy to fire Sammy Guevara. Um, he did have to make an apology. He's donating a chunk. I don't know if it's all his salary. That seems extreme. Again, I, I think, and this might, this also might be me, but the punishment seems disproportionate to the crime. You say something bad, you make your apology, you go on. As long as he's sincere about it and says, you know what? I was a stupid kid. Listen, we've all been there. We've all been stupid kids. We've all said things we've regretted. Eventually, well, for the most part, we mature sometimes. But to hold a guy to not make a livelihood. Uh, I mean, I've seen issues with that before. And you're like, really? It's that bad? I've seen so much worse. I mean, this is Florida. There was some Florida teacher that married one of her students. And for some reason, she still had a job. And this was when he was a minor. I mean, there are stories all over the place. A woman in Florida um, who doesn't wear a mask in town meeting, talks about the devil, something else, and something else. And it's like, Florida woman! Florida woman. Oh, yeah, they're changing my radio stations. I do not like what Florida's doing. They're changing my radio stations. After I finally get comfortable and have my radio all set and programmed, I'm like, oh, routine. No, this isn't supposed to be on. Routine broken. That's never good. But I digress. I'm sorry, folks. Um, if you want to leave any hate mail, I, I understand. I won't put the donkey up. I'll just send you a normal greeting, just like I did to Mike the God. So we start off not with Brandy firing Sammy Guevara, but we start off with Wardlow versus Luchasaurus in a Lumberjack match. Lumberjack matches are not what they used to be. Um, they used to be fun. They used to be energetic. They used to be random, too. You just didn't have heels on one side. Oh, there's a lizard. Faces on the other side. It was kind of interdispersed. Again, the whole... I, I do like the fact that Jim Ross gave the story behind the Lumberjack match. Two guys in Lumberjack camp don't like each other. They, they make a human ring. Fight until you figure it out. And then with the well, way it goes with most guys, you know what? You see some guy, hey, you're ugly. You're ugly too. Punch. Punch. Ouch, that actually hurt. You know what? That was stupid of what we said. Let me buy you a beer. You know what? I'll get the second round. That's how most guys finish things off. They punch each other in the face. Realize that it hurts and say, you know what? Let me get you a beer afterwards. No, women are different, though. They're just silent. They're just weird. That's, again, a whole other story. So, again, I do like the fact that Jared gave the history of the Lumberjack match. It was Wardlow versus Luchasaurus, and this is pretty fun. They start off, they just start fighting. That's the way every Lumberjack match should fight. Start off, this, I don't like you, you don't like me. Let's fight. That makes sense. Um, so they just straight blows. Wardlow gets the better of that. Wardlow hit, I don't even know how he did it, but he did an explosive suplex on Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus is no small guy. Uh, he mounts Luchasaurus, being the ring punches on him. And they go fight to the outside of the ring. They, uh, they trade punches outside the ring. Uh, Luchasaurus gets tossed into the face section. And then, of course, Wardlow goes out there to throw him back in the ring. Uh, Jungle Boy. Uh, so they were fighting more on the outside. They spent a lot of time outside. And the whole... And this is where... AEW screws up the concept of the Lumberjack match. The Lumberjack match is that you keep the guys inside the ring. You don't let them fight outside the ring. Or if they do fight outside the ring, they're fighting Lumberjacks. 
And the Lumberjacks, like, literally used to just say, punch, punch, get back in the ring. Now, not so much. You know, it's like, oh, it's time to dive, especially in AEW. As a jungle boy got tossed into the heel section. Of course, the heels beat him up, Marco Stunt. I'll tell you what, Marco Stunt did something really stupid. He upset Wardlow. Wardlow on the stage picked up Jungle Boy, uh, p- not Jungle Boy, but Marco Stunt, gorilla pressed him, and like threw him with height, like over his head, clearing the high bar into the heels. And again, the heels were just there to like catch people. So I can kind of see where Jim Cornette gets upset about all these diving high spots. Um, Luchasaurus. Then he decides he's going to jump into the whole pile of heels. Uh, he does the tail whip kick. Um, the headbutt is really good. Um, Warlow does go after the mask at one point of the match of Luchasaurus. I like that. The very, very traditional heel thing of trying to rip the mask off. However, it always ends because MJF distracted said referee. Wardlow landed the straight kick to the nuts, which didn't look that great. And then it was the F10. Wardlow wins. This sets up something maybe maybe for Fighter Fest, which is just dynamite. Next week, maybe, between MJF, Wardlow, and two out of three people from Jurassic Express. So, so we'll see what happens. Um, oh, the funny thing about this. Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta. I'll give them all the credit in the world, folks. At least they were dressed like lumberjacks. And that sucks in Jacksonville. Because it's hot. It's 80 degrees. It's 99% humidity. And they man up. They put on a flannel shirt. Put on jeans. They don't shave. They look like freaking lumberjacks. Oh, wait. Trent... And Chuck, best friends, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Because you at least look like lumberjacks. I applaud you guys for that. So that was pretty good. Uh, Yeah, so there was a thing about Austin City. So this match, as far as lumberjack matches go, normally they're kind of fun. This was... It was a good match. I, I enjoyed it. They just didn't have the Lumberjacks do the Lumberjack thing, though. It's a ham sandwich. Then I took a shower. And when I came back, it was Sheeta versus Red Velvet. Um, Hikaru Shida, as she's coming to the ring, is confronted by Penelope Ford. Penelope Ford snapped, slapped her. If I slapped Hikaru Shida, the cops would beat me. They would tase me. They would hit me with billy clubs. They would kick me. They'd probably drag me off in a chokehold. I know I'm not supposed to say any of those things about cops because that's not politically correct. But that's their job. Penelope Ford should have been tased, put in a chokehold, and dragged by her hair into a jail cell for slapping Hikaru Shida. But I guess she's a pro wrestler, so... WRESTLING! Uh, so things don't apply. So Hikaru Shida literally hits one knee to Red Velvet. Falcon Arrow. Match over with. Match piece of toast. And then it's just a fight between Sheeta and Penelope Ford. And I'll tell you, oh, there were some interesting people there at AEW. I'll mention one of them. In the background, wait a second, that's Cesar Bononi. I know he was released. I guess he found a home in AEW. Cesar Bononi, good for you. Hope to see you one day in AEW wrestle in the ring. Not on Dark because I really don't watch that. But then poor Ricky Starks. He was trying to separate the two. And Penelope Ford just, like, she went to, like, punch Sheeta. But, man, 
Ricky starts calling it like right on the orbital bone. He's like, oh, it's like, he knew he was part of it, but yeah, you want to be part of it, not that part of it. And then, um, Kairo Shida like wrecked. Let's take the start one. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Grass needs to be watered. No. Grass needs to to be. I hate texting. Watered and truck washed and truck washed. There we go. That's always, it's always fun when I get a text from my friend. You saw her picture yesterday. Again, some of us really never mature. But yeah, um, Kip Sabian's classes got absolutely wrecked. Caesar Benoni's in the back. And then there was... Oh, God. This was probably the most boring pre press conference. The only people there were people from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm someone from, from Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Oh, yes. Matt from PWI. Whatever. Uh, Jake Hagar shows up with his amazing looking wife. And of course, brawl ensues. Typical nonsense. Then there's a segment of Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. How it, it, <laughs> it demonstrates what happens when there's no cops around. Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss got jumped at a Jacksonville BP station. Thankfully, their professional wrestlers and the people they were taking on were just some, just some hoodlums. But again, people said, oh, defund police. No, more fun police. Let let police choke people out who deserve to be choked out. So I'll tell you what, even though you hear all these stories, oh, this cop put, on, put me in a blood show. Like, you know what? I'll say this, nine out of ten times, if a, if a police officer is choking you out, nine, I'll, you know what, I'll even be generous, eight out of ten times, you probably deserve it. I think a coworker said, oh, they have to ban them. I'm like, no, they shouldn't. Well, why shouldn't... Of course, bleeding heart liberal people says, well, why should they train cops to choke people? Because when the cops have to deal with some PCP loaded meth head, that's why they need to choke people. That's why they need to choke people out. I want to see that cop go home to his family after dealing with meth headed PCP freaks. I applaud police. And I promise I won't say anything else more about that. That's okay. And everyone has everyone is granted their opinion. I have my own. Um, I do think cops choking out people. I can see I can see the reason for for the training behind it. Uh, here in Daytona Beach, you have meth heads, people flying high on PCP. If you don't know what PCP does to you, it makes you like a skinny Hulk. It makes you this is a freaking rabid frothing machine of, of like punching people and again you need to choke them out properly that's all or, or even this way yeah either way works for me again it keeps my neighborhood safe so cops if you have to choke out that meth head homeless guy that goes up and down the main road I won't tell you where I live but if you choke him out you're the man. And then we had Joey Janah and Sunny Kiss taking on Brody Lee, man. And soon to be Dark Colt Cabana. It's actually pretty fun. Um, Sunny, Sunny Kiss is amazingly athletic. I'll tell you what, Sunny Kiss is, is way over the top with, with his outfit. And JR screwed up and actually called him or her. That's funny. Uh, he's very athletic to can do all the kinds of flips. But Brody, Brody is way too strong. Um, and then Joey Janelle was in pigtails. Uh, Cole Cabana, he, he came in. 
did some rope running after being egged on by Brody Lee. Uh, Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss hit the heart line for Brody Lee broke up the pin with a big boot. Uh, Brody Lee did a lot of work in this match for some reason. He's going to demand his pound of flesh from, from Dark Cabana for his match at Fighter Fest, I think. So I don't know. We'll see Dark Cabana, and that, that would probably be pretty good. Now, if they would push the Dark Order and a little bit better than they would, then they're finally doing things right. Uh, Brody Lee just beats up for a sunny kiss. Again, it really sets up Colt Cabana. Colt, he does eat a DVD by Joey Janela. Joey and Kiss, they do a lot. They do a tandem moonsault to the outside. That was pretty cool. Let's see here. There was no Doomsday device, though. Brody Lee broke that up. And... Let's see, I know something happened to the inside of Colt's elbow. I don't know if it got whacked off like some steel thing. But it was like all bruised looking bloody mess. So I don't know what happened there. There was a discus lariat. Um, Brody Lee and Colt Cabana won. Colt Cabana's on a win streak. This was a good match. Solid cheeseburger match. Lance, Lance Archer then shows up. Destroys both Sonny. Oh, wow, this is number 60. I gotta start cleaning off my hard drive. I need space. Probably this was actually the match of the night. I kind of understand why they had the main event as is. They could have had the Matt Hardy match now. This could have been the main event, but uh, I can understand. It was FCU versus CU. We go hard. Yeah. FTR. We go hard. Yeah. FTR. So this was a very classic match. I enjoyed this. And Allie was there. Bunny Allie. Yes. Yes. She had her sign. She says, I miss my QT. Because I think QT and John Moxley tested positive for coronavirus. That's actually going around Jacksonville a lot more than I thought it would. More so than Daytona Beach. Probably because people in Jacksonville never had the freedom set that we here in Bartertown, oh wait, I mean Bumtona Beach, wait, I mean Daytona Beach had during the whole lockdown thing. I think as long as you were in Daytona Beach, as long as you were like around your house by like 11 and not doing anything stupid, no one really cared. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure that that bum out on the main road was still being that bum on the main road at midnight and nothing happened to him. But again, as long as you don't do stupid things, cops won't choke you out. It's a simple idea. I'll get off it now, I promise, folks. But yeah, so people in Jacksonville are freaking out. So I want to say, I, I can't prove it, but there are some of those shady bars around. I think they were open during the coronavirus, and I don't think they're quite enforcing the 50% rule either. That's a whole other issue, though. So yeah, so QT Marshall and John Moxley, I think, tested positive for for coronavirus. Uh, I think they just were doing like like testing of everyone there, and then it was like, "Up, oh, you two, out, out of the pool, you two. Uh, but so Ali was there with a the sign. That's good to see. It's good to see. Wrestling people acting like fans, they bring their signs. It gives it a little bit more ambiance. It was fun. And also, Ali was in that press conference. It was kind of weird. That's okay. Um, this match, very classic rest, old school wrestling match, like something you see from the 70s. This was great. Uh, FTR isolated Kaz's arm. Again, to work that over classically. Arm bars, um, stomps to the arm, arm breakers, chicken wings, hammer locks. All the good stuff that you remember pro wrestling being at one time. Remember, we're not about flips. We're just fists. I wonder if I can use that line. Because that's an NXT line. No flips, just fists. Uh, Christopher Daniels gets in with, with the tag. Uh, just starts to headbutt people. Then eventually all four men get in the ring. It becomes a pure six brawl as we go to commercial break. This was a fun match, though. Um, again, those are jobs and, and 
Little quick jabs, jab, 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 cross by FTR. Again, fists, not flips. They did the dual snap suplexes, that slingshot suplex looked amazing. Again, the very few flips they do, they're flipping people, not flipping themselves. Again, some heel tactics, grabbing the trunks and roll-ups. Classic FTR, classic wrestling. Um, we got sent to the corner. Again, working over people in the corner by both. That was really good. The um, hold-up leg drop by SEU is great looking. Christopher Daniels had the fairy tale ending on, on one member of FTR. Now that now that now that the one shade off is goatee, they 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 don't they they still don't look the same. But I can't. It took it took me two years to figure out which one was Dash Wilder and which one was Scott Dawson. Now that they changed their facial features, I can't. Ah, it's gonna take me another two years to figure out which one's which. Christopher Daniels had the fairy tale ending though. Uh, but FTR hit the Shatter Machine. Oh, the Shatter Machine's back. Still one of the best dual finishers ever. Right next to the Magic Killer. Uh, this this was fun. It was a good, solid surf and turf match. Then we see a drunk Britt Baker. Because she was partaking in probably way too many Apple Teenies in her like Pope Mobile ish car. Have you ever seen the Pope? Mo well, I, I say the Pope Mobile, that's only because I'm Catholic. But the Pope had a specialized car built just for him. It's like an Cadillac convertible, a little shorter though, and the Pope surrounded in plexiglass. Because I think at one time, I think there were like assassination attempts on the Pope. So they wanted to protect the Pope. So they put the Pope in a little, uh, literally a plastic box on top of a car. Britt Baker is the same thing. It on, on the back of a golf cart. And there she is sipping apple teenies. Britt, Britt Baker, you got your boyfriend in trouble too. We'll get into that though. Um, so yeah. Then, the, then, of course, FCR demands the mic. They talk. The Butcher and Blade, they go into the car. The beautiful old GMC truck of FTR. How FCR is going to go back to South Carolina? Maybe we'll have to hitch a ride with Matt Hardy or do a ride share with Matt Hardy. Who knows? So yeah, we're going to have an eight-man tag match. Look behind you. The Lucha Brothers are behind them. Oh, this is going to be good. So this is a setup for Fighter Fest. It's going to be the Butcher, the Blade, and the Lucha Brothers. The Butcher, the Blade, and the Brothers taking on FTR and the Young Bucks. So that'll be interesting, to say the least. A uh, little thing about Hangman Adam Page and Best Friends kind of comparing and contrasting the two teams. John Moxley cut a promo about Brian Cage. Brian Cage comes to ringside. Beat Cage if you can. Survive if he lets you. Another squash match. Brian Cage versus John Cruz, I think. Yeah, John Cruz. Uh, Larry with some chops, a catch. He started to do some curls, and then just curled overhead, tossed him behind him. Went to the outside of the ring. Said, no, we're not done yet. It takes poor John Cruz, power bombs him back into the ring. Well over the ring, well over the ring ropes, too. Brian Cage is a beast. Does the drill claw. Taz is like, ah, I'm, my job's done here. And then, so this match is, is a squash match. What do you suspect? It's a can of soup. Actually, yeah. You know what? It's Brian Cage. And it's fun to see him do this to people. It's a ham sandwich of a squash match. Taz cuts his promo. That's pretty good. Uh, then in the back we see Colt Cabana and Brody Lee talking to each other. Um, 
Yep, so they're going to have another match. Come Fighter Fest. They're tagging up. They're going to face SEU. Then Big Swole dumps garbage on, on Britt Baker. And what a waste of an apple teeny that was. So she got so much garbage. And then, then um, Rebel started to... He, she came by with a leaf blower, blowing the garbage all over the place. That can't be sanitary. Wait a second. Especially if there's, like, used face masks and gloves. That's very unsanitary. Boo. Spreading coronavirus. That's not good. Bad job, Rebel. Um, probably the last match of the night was Santana taking on Broken Man Hardy because Sammy Guevara got suspended. And Ortiz was there. So this was a fun match. Uh, Matt Hardy, he goes to the, he gets beat up in the corner. Santana gets those chops on him. Eventually, they do some rope running. Santana winds up going over the top rope. Then Matt Hardy goes all Matt Hardy. <laughs> he, he bites his hand. That's so funny. Um, just like crush. He tries to tries to wake up Santana. He tries to wake up the inner soul of Santana by pressing his head into the ring post. And then, of course, I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. You cannot have an ECW match without a barricade spot, folks. Um, Matt Hardy then gets beat up during the commercial. Uh, Santana had a pretty good Arnagi. They did some yay boos. It was delete, 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 delete the turnbuckle spot. It's always fun. Again, with the crowd, they would chant delete, delete. Actually, this crowd would chant delete, delete. There are two side effects. Uh, Ortiz tried to interfere. Santana went for the six ounce, but then Matt turned that into a roll up. Broken! Yes! Matt Hardy wins. To be careful. I said that once. And... Hey, man. You want me to finish the show for you, brother? I will. Because I'm good like that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then what we had afterwards, we had a little bit of a kermuffle here. Because what we saw is we saw Adam Cole, baby, in the crowd. What's Adam Cole doing in this match? Well, it wasn't a match because then we had a little promo here with Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. It was a little... Dust up between the two. A little hockey fight going on. Some sweet shin music. But nothing they can't handle. They go into the crowd. And all of a sudden. Oh yeah baby. Bang. Ah. What the. I don't know. Weird things have been happening here folks. Um, Yeah I don't know what happened. But we had a little dust up in the back because Orange Cassidy confronted Chris Jericho with some sweet shin music. And, um, yeah, then there was a hockey fight. And then all of a sudden, we see Adam Cole, baby, in the crowd. Oh, Britt Baker, your boyfriend's in big problems because Adam Cole, baby. Was in the competitors' wrestling promotion. He can't be there. He's Adam Cole, baby, 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 baby. Yeah. Um. So it was, so then they fought in. They fought into the crowd, and I swear there was Adam Cole, baby. That's so fun to say. He had one of the best theme music stuff when he was in Bullet Club. Then um, Chris Jericho hit Orange Cassidy in the head with the hard cam boom. And nothing, nothing, nothing's going to hear, right? Okay, that's good. But, yeah. And then Orange Cassidy put Chris Jericho through the table, so we'll see what happens. So Chris Jericho's obviously winning. And before things get, get crazy and the light flickers on and off. Um, that was AEW. Oh, wait, did I mention that, man? I, I'll, I'll, I'll fiddle with it in the editing. But, yeah, that was AEW. 
an okay show. Again, AEW, I think, has been at such a high standard when it dips down. It's just noticeable. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And there's nothing underneath there. I don't think there's... See here. No, nothing in there. That's good. Thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, folks. Bye. Where was the cops at, man? This person shows up in my house. Like they should like choke him out or.